Hey there everybody, I am making a video uh, getting ready to put another machine onto Craigslist and uh, <clears throat> summer is normally a slow time for me and I uh, was not doing a lot of restoration work and this summer has proven to be a lot busier and so I'm, I think I'm down to one machine on Craigslist now so I've got to get my inventory back up. Uh, I'm getting several people uh, contacting me about machines. so. Working really hard here, wanting to get, I'm going to have several up in the next uh, few days. You'll see them come up on the listing. Uh, <clears throat> but this machine is one of those machines that I, I try to restore when I can get a hold of it. And this is, uh, you guys have heard me say this before, I call it the last of the Mohicans. Uh, when I restore vintage sewing machines, I look for machines that are all metal. I like machines that have all of their internals are steel. Uh, and, uh, and it's really important that, that that be the case because if you're going to spend the time and the money to restore a vintage sewing machine and keep it for generations, you want to start with something that's solid. So I always tell people to do that. And long after all of the other brands had gone to um, nylon or plastic gears, Sears at the time, uh, this is early 1970s, this is 1974, 1975, and these are the very last all-metal machines. Sears was having them made in Japan by a company called Marizen, and they are all-metal. And uh, they're the last. And after about the mid-70s, then all home sewing machines went plastic, and, and in my opinion, they're, they're fairly worthless. So, uh, so it's always kind of nice to see the, the technology that existed in the last truly vintage sewing machine. Uh, so anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit about this. This is the 158.1430 Kenmore. And uh, Sears always offered tons of different models for people when they went into the store, so they always had different price points. This model was a little more expensive, and the reason is that, of course, all of the internals are steel, and you'll see in some of the images where you see me having the top open, you'll see that. Uh, but the body... And the, and the chassis were aluminum, and that made it a lot lighter in weight. And so this machine, I'm including a cabinet. You don't see here because I had it up on the table. This is, um, I just finished the restoration about 30 minutes ago, and I'm getting ready to uh, do the video. But it comes with a uh, Sears, uh, its original Kenmore table. Uh, it's a small, you know, side table uh, size um, sewing table like many of them. And, uh, but you can also put this in a case and you can still get, you can get brand new carrying cases. And this machine, while it is not super lightweight like the cheap plastic machines, it's light enough that you could uh, potentially transport it without, without it being um, too heavy. So uh, one of the things you'll notice about this machine, and it gives itself away, you see the brown and the, sort of the off-white color. Uh, this is definitely a 1970s uh, style. And, of course, it has adjustable feed dogs. You can do free motion, um, free motion sewing with this if you wish. It has a Class 15 bobbin, and I'll, you'll see in the photographs of the things that come with the machine. It's going to have a button holder, a monogrammer, and, of course, it uses uh, Class 15 bobbins, which are one of the two bobbin systems that today are all over the place. They're common standard. And these bobbins are great. They hold more thread than any other uh, home bobbin type. So... That's an advantage there. The other thing you'll see about this machine, you'll see that it has a white uh, dot and a red dot. And right now I have it on the white dot. I'm going to demonstrate one of the cool features of this machine. Uh, the machine launched in the 70s. In the 70s, people were wearing a lot of double knits, these polyester knit suits, and other types of knits. And so they wanted machines that could sew knits. If you don't own a serger, this machine, of course, it has zigzag, it has straight stitch, uh, adjustable length, adjustable width, but it also has a number of built-in stitches, and they're built in with steel cams. So you can do blind stitch, you can do, um, of course, zigzag, you can do multi-point zigzag, smocking stitches, but you can also do what's called a pine leaf, and the pine leaf stitch, I'm, I've started to set this up now, and it's kind of a neat thing because it, it almost mimics the work of a serger. So if you need to, to uh, to, to do some sewing and get your seams um, or your edges, your raw edges um, uh, seamed up so that they don't um, ravel, uh, unravel, then this is a good machine for you. And it's, it's actually got a ton of features, far more than you're probably going to even use. But, uh, but anyway, I just wanted to demonstrate it for you. I'm going to do some sewing with it now. 
so that you can see I've got a couple different materials here. This is about four layers of sort of a, I don't know, maybe a lightweight cotton. It's got a little backing. It's part of a, part of a drapery fabric, I believe. And if you look at the motion of the fabric, you're going to see it's moving away from you like it would in normal sewing. But then it's also going to come forward just a little bit. And that's happening <clears throat> because it's building in slack. This is one of your stretch stitches. They're sometimes called reverse stitches. But, um, you know, reverse and stretch stitch did not really come into sewing machines until around the late 60s, early 70s. And again, it was the, the fashion trends of knits that really drove this, or I don't think we would have ever seen this. When I finish doing some of this uh, stitch work, I'll pull this out and let you see it up close. It really makes wonderful stitches. Uh, Kenmore's have very wide feet dogs, very strong. Um, let's see, I'm going to... Uh, now, if, if you watch what I'm doing, I'm going to flip this back over to the red dot, and that's going to give me what, what they call normal stitching. There's no slack built into the stitch. And um, if you're sewing with wovens, as many of you do, that's really all you're going to need. So. Uh, let's take a look. I'm going to come over and I'm going to just uh, do a basic zigzag for you. And let's see, I'm going to go to, I'm going to do long and I'm going to do a wide, wide stitch um, width so you can really see this. Hold on a second. Okay, oh I see. Right now I've got it, let me do, uh, I'm going to do my straight stitch, I misspoke. The machine's extremely quiet, even more quiet than most of your class 15 machines. Um, I always like to, this has a very long straight stitch capability if that's important to you. Uh, if you want to do some chain stitching, that's fine too. I'm going to shorten the stitch now so you can see it sort of has has the ability to do a very uh, fine stitch if you need that. Some people use this stitch for sewing knits. Some people do it with quilting. And of course I can slow it down. You see I can get the needle moving slowly. I can speed it up just like you can with with any sewing machine really. Now I'm gonna come over here and sort of get myself some, some open space here. And I'm going to go up to the top and changing your stitch width is very simple. I mean, it's literally as simple as doing this, right? So now I have really wide stitches and I'm gonna come back over here and change my length again so that you can see the zigzag. Many of you will find, whether you're a new sewer or even a seasoned sewer, honestly, uh, straight and zigzag are the, the majority of what you're going to use. Now I'm going to going to shorten the stitch again and see if we can get close to a satin stitch. See what that looks like. Let's go even shorter. Here we go. Yeah. So I'll pull this out, and you guys can see. I'm sure this is reading right. Okay, so this first one here, of course, is my pine leaf. It reminds me again, it's, it's not a, a serger, it doesn't cut the fabric, but it reminds me of one. Now you're going to see the long straight stitch, the short, the zigzag, and then the really fine zigzag right here. Um, just really, really wonderful stitches. Um, one of the things I'm noticing here is, or remembering to tell you guys, is about the presser foot. You may know this. Let me turn the light out so you can see this a little better. Most sewing machines have about a quarter of an inch space. That's plenty. It's all I ever use when I sew. But for those of you who are going to sew... Um, slip covers, uh, you know, seat covers, which you can do with this machine, you'll notice that I can pull, I can pull this way up and I'm getting about a half an inch. That's pretty amazing and the Kenmore's were the only machines to ever do this. And again, you're not going to sew through a half inch of material, but it gives you that space to move things around. So that's a really neat feature to have. 
uh, let's see, I'm going to sew through, you guys have seen me do this before, this is a uh, part of a cargo pant, and I want you to see it sew through the seams. Sewing with a size 16 Oregon brand titanium needle, home sewing needle. And I want to go to, uh, I want to go back to straight stitch again. Oh, get my machine turned on. Okay. And this machine has a lot of power. I'm going to put it in reverse so you can see it back tack. This machine has a one and a quarter amp motor, which is extremely strong. And it also has a double belt system. It has a double belt pulley, and that gives it a lot more torque. Uh, different ways to do strong sewing machines, and this was the way that this company did this for Sears, and it's amazing. I mean, it doesn't even slow down when it hits that seam. It's just really amazing. So let's take it out, and you guys can see. Got the green thread. Let me see here. That green thread is, uh, is actually, actually my bobbin thread, and then on top I have a like a blue, this sort of light blue, um, I don't know if you guys can see, that's the, the, uh, the top spool thread. So again, you know, just, just amazing power. Um, you guys may sew any, any number of different materials. Now this is a vinyl, and it's a very dense vinyl. It's sort of like, not quite as heavy as Sunbrella, but it's coated, okay? And I've, I've had people buy machines from me because they tell me a lot of the new machines won't sew this type of material. And a lot of it has to do with this, the density of the weave. So I'm going I'm to take this, I'm going to put it on the, uh, the woven side, not the coated side. It might be easier for you guys to see. And we'll sew through this, and I, I really don't expect to have any, any problems at all because it's just, again, um, you know, the machine is, it has so much compared to what new machines have. And I'll turn around and this time <clears throat> I'm going to come back and I'll sew a little faster. I'm not a fast sewer but some of you are. And I want you to see the machine. The machine does have the ability to do it um, if you have the, the, uh, the skill level. Okay. And now you guys can see those were just incredible, incredible straight stitches, really beautiful. There's the other side. Now I'm going to, lastly, I'm going to sew some garment leather. You can see where I've sewn it on in this pink thread before, but this new color will show you the new stitches. And really, I, I'm using a fabric needle. You would use a leather tip needle, but uh, again, you're still... I, 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 <laughs> This machine will still do it. I like leather tip needles, but I'm doing a variety of materials here, so I chose a fabric needle for this. Let's see. Now, sometimes you'll notice that leather will want to sort of stick. This leather almost stuck to the foot, and that has to do with friction. And you can get a, uh, what's called a roller foot. And you can see those just those stitches are really amazing. Again, this is flexible garment leather. Um, this machine is uh, pretty amazing. It has a tremendous amount of power again because of its motor uh, and the double pulley system that it had. It's uh, like I say, I call it the last of the Mohicans. It's the very last machine that was ever made uh, all metal. So if you want to get a case for it and make it portable, or if you simply want to have it in the table, uh, you can do both. So if you have any questions, just email me, uh, and I'd be happy to set up a time for you, bring your own materials, or use some of mine, and we can, uh, we can have you do some test sewing on it. Thanks.